Thanks for joining us this week on the show for my conversation with Christopher Lee Maher, an elite Navy SEAL in his past an aspiring Olympic athlete, and then through his own journey of healing and transformation, he now holds space for others to unwind from strama, stress and time resulting in the strama that so many of us carry and are impacted by to live life with more freedom, flow and happiness. Thanks so much for joining us. Feel free to leave a comment over on happifiedlife.com or here on the YouTube video if you're catching us online. Would love to hear your takeaways from the show. Thanks for tuning in. Living in a stressful world doesn't mean you have to give up on happiness. Instead, you can shift your perspective of stress and discover how to live your life in flow. Welcome to Happified. I'm your host, Susie Vine. Join me for inspiration and interviews with folks who are shining their light in the world in the areas of positive mindset, health, and wellness. I'm so happy to have you here. What if you could maximize your meditation practice with a tool that maximizes your time and attention with images and affirmations carefully selected to boost your positivity, to help you integrate your intentions into your subconscious? I have a special gift available for you. Visit happifiedlife.com and click on the Start Off Happy button to take a look at the phenomenal technology created by Positive Prime that uses neuroplasticity to literally wire your brain for more happiness, higher productivity, better relationships, and greater success. Head over to the happifiedlife.com page to start off happy with Positive Prime. Enjoy it free for 30 days. Welcome back. I am so excited to have you with us today for a conversation and a chance to go deep with my guest, Christopher Lee Maher, who was a Navy SEAL in his prime with a sleek 1.8% body fat. After the SEALs, he began focusing on his dream of making it to the U.S. Olympic trials in track and field. Unfortunately, even as one of the fittest people on the planet, the impact of high stored stress loads kept him from ever manifesting that dream. He was also completely unaware of the full impact of stress would leave on his physical, mental, energetic, and emotional well-being. Like many high-performing athletes, he dealt with pain on a semi-consistent basis until a car accident tipped the scales and he was forced to turn his attention on finding a way to heal himself. Christopher devoted all of his energy, time, and resources seeking out answers that would alleviate his discomfort. Working for five to six hours every day for seven years, he put every biological system that was out of balance back in balance, developing a deep understanding of what it takes for the body, mind, energy, and emotions to perform optimally. Christopher learned that piled up stress causes severe and traumatic damage over time, what he calls strama. I think that's a word I'm going to be keeping in my vocabulary. A combination of stress plus time that transforms into trauma. From his own relentless search to evolve and heal himself, he now innately understands the correlation between the emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of a being. He wrote the book, Free for Life, a Navy SEAL's Path to Inner Freedom and Outer Peace. To deepen his own understanding and help others along their path to healing, Christopher committed to studies taking him from San Diego, California to Thailand and now Los Angeles, and he's currently pursuing a master's and doctoral degrees in traditional Chinese medicine. His knowledge and experience led him to develop a comprehensive system of total physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual healing and integration, the true body intelligence technology. Thank you very much for bearing with me through that very long introduction, but it's hard to put all that you have done, experienced, and learned in a nutshell. So I wanted to cover the basics first so we can really dive in and cover some ground in our conversation. Thanks, Christopher, for joining me today. Hey, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to serve. Uh, thank you for opening the door to allow me to impact your community. And I've had lots of conversations about stress. I call myself a stress transformation coach. And I think we'll get into in the conversation how you regard this 
phrase or habit of stress management that our society has kind of gotten a hold of. But first I wanted to take a look because I do see that a lot of people tend to use stress as fuel. And I think in your own history, that was one of the fuels that you were running on to strive and survive for a long time in your life. And I'm curious to learn um, where people might see some signs of the breakdown, perhaps before they end up at the point at which with the pain, the injuries, the recovery that you yourself had to navigate as you came along your path. I mean, that's difficult for people to do because people want to go along doing what they've always done. They've been in a habit, they've been in a pattern for a long time. And when you've been in a pattern and a habit, the way that your brain is working, it's firing through specific neural pathways, right? And as you re-engage those neural pathways again and again and again and again and again, until you edge up against some type of discomfort, something that makes you feel uncomfortable, you're unwilling to take a look because the life that you're creating in the environment that you have set up for yourself is a clear mirror for you that the things that you're doing are actually working. So the challenge is if someone is super successful at what they wanted to do. So let's say they wanted to become like a grade school teacher, right? And well, what do you, I went to college, I graduated, I did the interview, I got the job. I'm a successful teacher. I have a few plaques on my wall that tell me that I'm doing a really good job. Why would I ever stop or why would I interfere with my pattern if I don't have any real proof that the things that I'm doing when I'm outside of teaching are creating problems for me that are going to show up down the road? And probably the easiest way to see that is if you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like a rock star, you don't feel like Superman or Superwoman, you're highly stressed. You should be able to put your head on the pillow, fall asleep within a couple of minutes, and wake up feeling amazing. If it's difficult for you to fall asleep, or it's difficult for you to get out of bed in the morning, and you need some assistance, a cup of joe, a cup of caffeine, cup of green tea, something that has some stimulant in it, then that is your first indication that your restore repair and recovery rate is super, super low. And the only way that you can have a restore repair and recovery rate that's super low is if you have a high level of unresolved lifetime accumulated stress, which the term that you use earlier correctly would be strama, right? So strama is a high level of unresolved stress, tension, and distortion. By the time you get to pain, right, mm -hmm. you've gone way too far, right? And the truth is the only way that we check ourselves is if something isn't going the way that we think it should. So what's, what's a good indication? Um, sleep and energy level. Is my energy consistent all day long without stimulants? If it isn't, then we know for sure that there's unresolved stress, tension, and distortion hanging out inside of your body. The challenge is this, is that when your stress level gets super high, the way that energy flows through your body is now encumbered rather than being unencumbered. And so when you take that cup of joe or you drink those those two bottles of Coca-Cola, right? You're using an external stimulus to try to drive energy that you can on your own through a place where your energy is blocked. The other indication that I think is really simple to see is if you have a headache, any kind of headache, that is a deep indication to you that your lifetime accumulated stress is way too high. So between sleep and headaches, and evaluating your level of energy, that should be enough for you to determine that something under, underneath the hood of your car is not clicking correctly. And unfortunately, in our lifestyle, we have normalized dealing with headaches, even migraines. 
sleep issues, even insomnia and chronic fatigue, and those energy levels that need to be boosted, that need to be moderated, you know. Now it's, it's you know, okay to take these modulating herbs, ashwagandha and ginseng, which have their place, but again, to be relying on those, to have that external energy. I love the way you put that, and external support for your energy that is still meeting the blocks that haven't been addressed, That's caused right. by stress, tension in the body. Yeah, I mean, uh, the eloquence with which you deliver that, love it. Uh, the science behind it, absolutely correct, okay? The challenge is, is the listener willing to take a half step back and go, hmm, wow, what would it be like if I put caffeine or the daily drugs, right? The daily acceptable drugs would be nicotine, caffeine, alcohol, pharmaceutical, or now recreational drugs. Like most states in the United States, you can you you can puff up a joint or you can smoke a bowl after work to deal with your stress. Anyone who's using the daily drugs, that's an indication to you that you're attempting to manage something that's unmanageable with the substances that you're using, right? And this is why stress management techniques, they don't really work. You need stress resolution, right? You should be able to go to bed again, fall asleep easily, and wake up feeling energized and be able to take care of all of your tasks during the day from a peaceful state of mind, grounded emotions, and in a comfortable body. And if you're unable to do that, without the assistance of caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, recreational, or pharmaceutical drugs, someone needs to inform you and tell you the truth. The truth is you're highly stressed. And attempting to manage your lifetime accumulated stress with substances that are more stressful than your stress is crazy. And one of the most overlooked thing is and I was using this as an opportunity to deal with my stress, excessive exercise. Like who needs to be at the gym, you know, pounding iron for two hours a day? Okay. Who needs to run 25 miles on the weekends, right? 10 miles on Saturday, 15 miles on Sunday. Like if you got to do that to feel alive, then you're using all of that pumping of your heart intensely as a driver. Your energy should be able to move smoothly and freely and unencumbered to give you enough energy to feel happy, grounded, present, alive, and satisfied and peaceful every single day. Yeah, thank you for bringing up the exercise factor too. And as we briefly uh, connected before starting to record, we discovered that our paths have most likely crossed here in the beach community of Solana Beach where I live and the gym that you used to frequent in the neighborhood. And and I, I definitely see that out on the streets. We've definitely got the triathlon crowd, the distance runners and that sort of thing. And I do see that again as more of that external fuel so thank you for putting it that way external fuel that we use to to pump ourselves up to kind of get us out of that hump to provide that activation energy because we're not getting the restoration and recovery that we need through a night's sleep which is so important that's what it's designed to provide for us yeah and you know to, to add to what you're saying it's designed to make us feel good for the next day, but it's also designed to keep us young and youthful, like our tissues, our muscles, our ligaments, our joints, our fascia, our bones, our skin. You know, um, a lot of the people in my family, you know, they were smokers and they drank a lot of alcohol. So they either died of cirrhosis of the liver or lung cancer or colon cancer from these substances that people are using to manage. Would it be more prudent, right, to step away from using what I call cover-ups, okay? 
and actually get honest with yourself. I mean, if we, if we look at honesty, honesty would be the noble quality, right? Because there's two versions of it. There's my ability to be honest with others and let them in on how I'm feeling. And then there's my ability to be honest with myself. And this is where I think people struggle the most, right? I think outer honesty is easy, right? It's, it's informative, it's factual, but inner honesty is emotional. Am I willing to take a good look at myself? Am I willing to step back and go, hmm, what if I took a small risk? What if I like, I replaced my coffee habit with, I kept the ritual, okay? I made a cup of tea, herbal tea instead. I still have something hot that I'm drinking in the morning. I'm going to bravely go through the monster headache that I'm going to get for three or four days afterwards, right? What if I stepped back from that stimulus? Would I need less alcohol at night to calm down? Yes, certainly I would, because if you're pounding the caffeine to get the motor going in the morning, you're going to need something to bring it down. You're going to need a downer like alcohol or worse, sugar, right? Uh, you're going to need something to calm you down. And can I get off the biochemical roller coaster that I know is drying out my tissues? And we just mentioned ligaments tendons, muscle, fascia, skin, bones? Am I willing to continue to step away from drying myself out, right? Because when you get dry, what does that then affect? That affects digestion. That affects your ability to move your bowels. So people who are dealing with constipation, women who are dealing with menstrual cramps. Okay, like, am I, am I willing to keep my body moist, right? If you can keep your body moist, you're getting really, really good sleep. And you're restoring and repairing. That means each day you're growing, right? You're growing emotionally. You're getting more intelligent. Physically, you're getting more intelligent. Analytically, mentally, you're getting more intelligent. And spiritually, you're getting more intelligent because you're present. What's, what, what are the things that keep us from being present? That's the question, right? Anything I put in my body that pulls me into a state of fight or flight. Well, what's going to pull your nervous system into a state? into a state of fight or flight, anything that's a downer or anything that's an upper, anything that's a downer and anything that's an upper. Okay. So now my nervous system's in fight or flight when it's in fight or flight, what it means is this, my brain is operating out of a lateralized state of function. So one hemisphere of my brain is turned on electrically and the other half is snoozing. How do we know this? We know this by applying a system called teaching through testing. I could lay down every one of the listeners on this call right now on a table, and I could measure and walk them through a process that would for sure show them that their brain is operating out of a lateralized state of function and they're in fight or flight. So how do I get out of fight or flight? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to reduce all of the nonsensical stressors that you're applying to every day and slow everything down. Like I, I had, um, had and have a really great coach. His name's Rich Litvin. And, and Rich talks about this concept of slow down to speed up, right? Mm -hmm. Slow down to speed up. Well, if you get off the caffeine, you're going to start slowing down really quickly. If you get off the alcohol, you're going to slow down really quickly. If you pull back from two and a half and three hours of exercise down to 60 minutes to 45 minutes, because once you go past 45 minutes, it's called diminishing returns. Meaning when you go to sleep that night, your body cannot recover from three hours of intense training efficiently and effectively. So what it's got to do is instead of using your interest that you've developed from years of training, now it's got to dig into your capital source of energy. And every time you do that, you get a chunk older that next day. Our job is to age gracefully, slowly, allow us to have full days where we can work. We can spend a portion of our day working on our emotions, being creative. We can spend a portion of our day working on our body, getting physical. We can spend a portion of our day reading and educating ourselves. We can spend a poor mental. We can spend a portion of our day aligning through meditative practices, through prayer, 
through reading of scripture, um, from, uh, from applying mantras, opening up our bodies, doing breath work, right? Spiritual. We could be spending a significant amount of time developing ourselves into becoming amalgamated beings instead of these one trick ponies that are suffering and looking for recognition inexhaustibly, right? Mm -hmm. From other people around us. Because when you're, when you're present, what does that mean to be present? When you're present, it simply means that you're physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually focused simultaneously. So instead of grabbing from one well of energy or intelligence, I'm able to dip into all the aspects of myself, right? Now, of course, this sounds daunting. Like, how am I going to redesign my life to make all of this happen? It's really, really, really simple. All you have to do each day is take a little bit of tension out from the day before. And if you can take out the tension and stress that you built up from Monday on Tuesday morning, or Monday night before you go to sleep, when you step into that day, Tuesday, you're going to be way more present, which means you're going to be making different decisions. You're going to be making decisions that lift you up rather than push you down. And so when you're overstressed, well, what do you attract? You attract to yourself people, situations, dynamics, and institutions that match the level of stress that you're already under. So the, 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 the prudent thing would be to do what? To reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load by at least 50%. If you can do that by 50%, you're living not a good life, right? Not even a great life. You're living an extraordinary life. And the question is, how, to, how do we do that? So many, so many insights and ideas through what you've just said. But one of the things that I really wanted to kind of go back and hold on to is that pursuit of um, youthfulness and longevity and what an industry it has become because we don't want to take the time and put in the effort to be present, to unwind that stress. So just like looking for that external fuel in the morning, we look for the external solutions to address the way that we look and the way that we feel. And our, again, you know, it always comes back to energy. Everything is energy, so it's hard not to. Um, but I think that's really significant to, again, say, you know, these things that we say that we want to take a look at why it is we're resistant to doing the things that more easily and gracefully invite those in to invite those instead of pursuing them and putting it also on the list of things we have to do i also have to do this regime in order to look younger and uh, fight off age this whole adversarial um, energy that we bring to the table i find really interesting and that um that energy of stress like you're saying when you start to release that load of stress you can be more present to so much more because in that stress response we're so drilled in on the one thing we don't have access to reaching beyond that so i think that's really powerful thank you for explaining that so beautifully that by taking a step back by disengaging even these small increments are enough to start opening that opportunity to put down that chronic stress mm, you're absolutely correct um i'm the type of person where of course, when I was in SEAL training, we're training eight, 12, sometimes 16 hours a day, right? So that's where I come from. Now I can put in 15 to 20 minutes in one day, one day, and I'm as strong, okay? And as present as I've ever been off that tiny little bit of energy. You know, a guy said to me a long time ago, it's a guy named Jeff Hicks that was in SEAL teams. He goes, look, as you start attaining mastery, Instead of having to put five hours in, you only need to put four. The next year, you only need to put in three and a half. The next year, you only need to put in two. The next year, you only need to put in one. And as you continue to keep evolving, you have to put in less time. And the result that you're producing is more exponential than when you were putting in four and five hours of time, energy, and effort. And this is the way that the body works. And the challenge is, is that no one has put together a system that allows us to understand the implicate order to true transformation. 
All right. So what's the first step? The first step is you have to turn on the brain. You have to have both hemispheres operating correctly. Why? Because the left hemisphere is associated with masculine energy. The right hemisphere is associated with femi feminine energy. So if you're moving through the world, and this is 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet. So if you're listening, it's you too. You're included in this conversation. Okay. I'm sharing that with you because I want, I want you to understand that I care enough to tell you the truth rather than allow you to run around and stay in the dark. Okay. So you got to turn on both hemispheres of the brain. After you turn on both hemispheres of the brain, the upper brain, you have to turn on the lower brain, right? The lower brain would be the conception vessel. Okay. In Chinese medicine, they would call it the Ren channel of energy. That's where all your emotional intelligence lives. You got to turn on the upper brain, which is your analysis. And then you got to turn on the lower brain, which is all of your emotions. What's very interesting is when those two brains are communicating clearly, they generate the energy called magnetism, right? And you are an electromagnetic being. So sexual energy is magnetic, right? Analytical energy is electrical. When those two are operating correctly, your body naturally fills up all the empty reservoirs into all of the other organs. It feeds those parts of your body. The challenge is 99.9% .9 of the public is turned off. Those two channels are turned off and they're not communicating clearly. So when those two things are turned on, then you have to think, well, where, where do we go from there? Oh, I have to break my nervous system's loyalty to my parents' inner deficiencies, insecurities, and fears, right? How, how do I do that? You got to do some energy work on that, and you've got to transmute that. Then what do I got to do? Hmm. Oh, I have to turn on my emotional body, and I got to bring my nervous system into what I call emotional balance. So then I have to work with the bladder channel. I've got to strip out the tension and stress that's in there and I got to turn on the breath. So 99% of the people that have ever come to work with me, how many of them do you think were good at breathing relative <laughs> to what they were feeling in terms of sensation or breathing relative to the actual effort that they were exerting? Yeah, I'm going to say next to none. I think breathing next to is none. I mean, literally next to none. And the funny thing is we're talking about some of the most successful people in the world, right? Because I work with high level athletes, high level performers, um, CEOs, dip, diplomats, a bunch of people who have external success, right? But internally, they're having next to zero success because their emotional body is turned off. So they don't have a way of accessing levels of intimacy that would make them feel satisfied mm -hmm. and motivated to continue to work on how they're being versus what they're doing. Doing is easy. Anybody can show up and grind it out. But being, that's a whole different ballgame. Well, how do we shift from doing into being? It's the steps that I told you. You have to turn on both hemispheres of your brain. You need to turn on the lower brain. You need to break your inner deficiency. You need to break away your nervous systems and your brain's loyalty to your parents' inner deficiencies, insecurities, and fears. And then you have to bring your emotional body into some relative state of balance. And that's like, that's like the beginning of half of step one but a powerful leap forward. And I'm so glad you came around to being versus doing. This is something that I really love to take a look at. And I love the way that you dig into this and shine some light on it. Because again, those high achievers have really gotten caught up in the doing and I think really can lose track of the being, like you said, disconnected from that emotional awareness and connection within. Yeah. And the challenge is they're in positions of leadership, right? And now we have these guys are in positions of leadership. They're writing books, they're getting recognition, and now they're leading the rest of the troops down the same road. And then they're ending up dissatisfied. Like I worked with a lot of people who work on, on wall street for a while when I was in New York city. Okay. They're managing their stress with cocaine, intense amounts of alcohol and prostitution. 
Okay. And now you've got men and women who are at the top of these companies. Okay. And whether that's in whatever form of leadership that they're in, when you get recognition for what you do, you wear that as a badge of honor. Right. And the more recognition you get for that, the more valuable you think that is. Okay. Well, let's talk about being. Being's a different state. Am I being open minded? Am I being empowered? Am I being in a position where I understand the value of empowering others? Am I experiencing a sense of freedom? Am I being caring? Am I being honest? Am I being passionate? Am I being creative? Am I being humorous? Am I being happy? Am I being devoted? Right? Am I being sober? Am I being present? Am I being alive? Am I, am I able to be transformation? Am I being forgiving? Right? Am I being unconditionally loving? These are states of being versus states of, of doing. And we overvalue doing over being. And we're in a world, okay? We're, we're all contributing to this together, but we're in a world where externally we look around and we go, hey, I don't like the way this is functioning. What's the easiest way for any human to shift what they don't like on the outside, right? Is to shift what's going on in them on the inside. Because this is a third dimensional plane of projection, reflection, manifestation, and generation. So if you don't like what's being manifested, you don't like what's being generated, you don't like what's being projected, and you don't like what's being reflected, simply change the construction of how things are organized inside of yourself, right? Break your limiting beliefs, right? You need a successful pattern interrupt to do those. Well, the easiest way to do that is to remove the tension and the stress and the distortion in your body because all nervous systems vibrate to the highest functioning nervous system in a collective field. So when you're in a state of peacefulness, happiness, groundedness, and presence, everyone you're interacting with that day, you're donating that to them. Forget focusing on the outside. Forget about the Republicans and what they're doing and the Democrats and what they're doing. Forget about the banking. Forget about all of that. Like literally go into your bathroom, hold up a mirror, look at yourself, be honest with yourself and go, where do I need help? Okay. And then get on the freedom train and start removing the tension and the stress and the distortion that's got you so focused on the external that it's disconnected you from the from your opportunity to experience consistent in, internal happiness. Beautiful. I really love that. It's time to unsubscribe. And I think, mm. you know, as we said starting at the beginning, you know, we've normalized this picture of success and everyone feels like you know it's they have to hit the mute button on this this stirring inside this unease this dis-ease that's brewing and keep on showing up and supporting a system that's broken fundamentally so you know individually when we're starting to feel that when we recognize we're running on external fuel instead of internal energy and we start to try to disengage that feels like a big like swimming upstream like working mm. against the tide right it can be really overwhelming and hard to keep coming back to that when everybody else is you know i think there's that uh story people love to share about the crabs that try to pull the one back down into the pot mm -hmm. when it tries to climb out um do you have a little bit of advice or suggestion for somebody who's trying to stake out their space and reclaim their energy to plug back in and reconnect. Yeah, yeah. The first step really is honesty. And what that means is when you wake up and you have that epiphany, you have that awakening, you go, you know what? Yeah, this really doesn't work for me. You go to the people who are in your sphere of influence and you go, look, for the next 60 days, I'm going to be on a program. I'm doing an investigation. And during my investigation, I'm not going to drink any caffeine. I'm not going to drink any alcohol and I'm not going to drink any refined white sugar. Okay. And inform them and go, I need your help and your support to keep me present. Now 
you've enrolled them to be somebody who helps hold you to a higher standard versus enrolling them as somebody who wants to resist what you're doing. And that's the simplest way because the people that love and care about you most are the ones who are running the same pattern that you're running. So when you step forward and you go, hey, this is wrong, they feel like you're saying that they're wrong. And the truth is, every soul has a right to have whatever experience that, that, that they want to have, okay? And you do too. And so when you have that recognition of what it is you really want to be experiencing next, next and investigate, and don't, don't listen to me, put what I'm telling you to the test and see if what I told you is actually true, right? Inform your loved ones and enroll them as supporters for you creating a successful pattern interrupt. And whatever that pattern is, you got to be honest about it with yourself. And when you're willing to be honest and take that half step back, you've already taken a really good leap forward. I love that. And I think that approach is so important because it's easy for any of us to respond with, you know, feeling defensive when someone approaches and said, you know, I'm changing this, especially as you said, we tend to be working at the same level, leaning on the same crutches. And so those people who are close to us with that frame and that presentation, this is an experiment that I'm doing for myself. I appreciate your help. It's much more likely to get that support and, and less friction. Yeah, and, and then you're already setting a clear boundary, right? They know it's not forever, right? It possibly could be. They know you're doing your own investigation, right? And they are going to want to support you to be happy because they likely have been observing you clearly like, wow, Susie should, man, she would reach so much more of her potential if she put the bottle of wine down, right? Okay. <laughs> and there's so much misinformation out there about these substances, right? Because guess what? These companies are in business to do business, right? Right. They're not, they didn't sign up to do ethical business. They're signing up to do business, right? They have shareholders. They have people that they have to answer to, and they want to enroll you to, to be a customer and they want to keep you enrolled. Then they're going to use whatever substance that they need to, to do it. This is funny. When I was living in Del Mar, Jimbo's was my favorite grocery store to go to, right? And I would go to Jimbo's. And when I first started investigating this, I'd go to eat the healthy cereals. Well, the healthy cereals, they never had any sugar in them, right? And then a movie came out called Sugar, right? That talked about the how, how sugar was white sugar, unrefined sugar and brown sugar were as addictive as cocaine, okay? And I thought, well, it, shortly after that, you would go to the grocery store. Every one of those organic companies started putting sugar cane in their cereals, right? So then I saw, then at that moment, I thought, oh yeah, this really is a profit first country, right? There's profit and then there's ethics and then there's, there's ethical profits. So you can't assume that a company is looking out for your best interests. You have to make your first assumption is this company is trying to maximize its profits, right? That's why they're in business. You have to be in the business of maximizing your potential. Mm -hmm. which means you have to read the ingredients that they're feeding you. If it says white sugar, cane's juice, natural sugar, whatever it says, if it doesn't say coach, uh, fruit sugar, coconut sugar, or date sugar, or stevia or honey, it is going to cause damage to your brain. Okay. And sugar is one of the most toxic substances to the liver. Most people don't even know where the organs are in your body. Anyone who's listening, get out an anatomy book, okay? 
look at the name, basic names of your muscles and get out a physiology book and look at the names of your organs. You should at least know where they exist in your body. You, you can no longer be ignorant, okay? Because if you are, you're going to pay a price every single day because what you put in your body has a direct effect on your stress levels, your body's ability to recover when you're sleeping. And you got to stop robbing from Peter to pay Paul, robbing from Paul to pay Susie, robbing from Susie to pay Jake, robbing from Jake to pay Jamal. You know, you have to stop that. You have, you have, to, you have to create a successful pattern interrupt. Yes, powerful. And I think that insight and taking back our power over the information that what we're putting in because marketing is so effective definitely hits all the psychological triggers and buttons so we have to be aware consumers and i think that's really important and as you said it's much more easier to receive the messages that are being served up to us than to dig for the information the fundamental information we should all have like where is our liver and how much space does it take up in our body? Because it does how much for us? It filters all of the blood that comes from everything we eat. So yeah, those ingredients, those processed chemicals, the sugars, all of that, weighing it down. The wine at the end of the night, not a good cherry on top. <laughs> Definitely not letting you recover during your sleep, right? You've got a lot more healing to do. And look, if you're triggered by what I'm saying, good. I'm, I'm happy you're triggered. Because if you're listening to this call, hopefully you're listening to this call to get uncomfortable because where discomfort is, you're willing to make change. I'm not the guy where you're going to lay on the table. I'm going to rub massage oil all over you and play woo woo music in the background. I'm into true transformation, right? Like this implies we have to, we have to do some work, right? We have to put some energy, some effort and some consciousness in put down the sugar and look take one of these daily drugs and tackle them one at a time right trying to go cold turkey on everything is a little too much unless you have a really strong will and you have a really strong mind and some of you do but for those of you who don't okay tackle one at a time the easiest one for you probably the most difficult one to tackle is going to be the sugar okay um but tackle the ones that are the most stimulating, the daily drug you rely on most, okay? To manage your stress. Why? Because in the management of stress, you're creating more stress. I am into stress resolution, not into stress management. I just want to get rid of it and live free, be at choice, have a quiet mind, have a comfortable body, have grounded emotions, have abundant amounts of energy all day, every day for years at a time. Okay. For years at a time, for decades. That's the only way I'm interested in living. And the only way you can is if you're willing to be ridiculously honest with yourself. I tell people all the time, go look in the mirror, eye to eye, soul to soul and have some deep conversations. All right. I recently worked with someone uh, when I was in Iceland and he was unable to look at himself in the mirror before we met. Okay. Maybe over his whole life, he remembers looking in his own eyes for 10 seconds. Okay. 10 times for 10 seconds. Okay. And he said, maybe 20 max. All right. Now he's able to stand in front of a mirror and look himself in the eye because he knows he's making the right choices for himself to elevate his energy, to quiet his mind, to build a comfortable body and to ground his emotions. This is what true transformation is about, right? If you want a cheerleader, someone who's going to pump smoke up your rear end, I am not your guy. Okay. My tribe, my people, my crew are the people who are here, look out into the world and go, you know what? Yeah, I don't like what I see. What can I do internally inside to make the world a better place for every life that I touch? 
And the only way to do that is to develop yourself. How do you develop yourself? You got to develop yourself emotionally, right? There's an opportunity to develop yourself psychologically in terms of your behavior. You got to develop your energy, right? You have to develop your spirit, your energy, get it peaceful and calm and grounded. People come up to me all the time, perfect strangers. And they say to me, wow, you're so peaceful. And I said, yes, I am. Can you feel that? They say, yeah, I could feel it all the way from the other side of the grocery store. The second I looked at you, I just felt calmer. And that's because I've been putting time, energy, and effort into reducing my lifetime accumulated stress. And how do you do that, right? That's the question. Well, I gave you some basic identifiers, right? Or basic identifiers were, look, when you wake up in the morning, how you feel is relative to your restore, repair, and recovery rate. The only way we can lower our restore, repair, and recovery rate is if our lifetime and daily stress loads are too high, okay? So now we know how to identify that. If I have intermittent or consistent headaches, that's an indication that you're already in a high level of stress, right? Um, if you're using the daily drugs, okay, nicotine, caffeine, alcohol, recreational drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, to prop up your energy to be greater than it really is, then that should be an indication for you. What you're choosing to eat and what you're choosing to drink is very easy to help you understand as a reflection how stressed you are inside. Because no one who's in a state of peace and calm and groundedness would ever want to put poison in their system. It would not make any sense to them. But someone who's highly stressed, that makes perfect sense. Like, guess what, mom? I just graduated from Stanford. It was difficult. I made it. Tonight I'm going out. I'm going to get drunker uh, and higher than, and make the dumbest decision I've ever had my, my entire life. Okay. Only a highly stressed person thinks that that's a great idea, right? That's the worst idea on the planet. I'm going to sell. I've worked so hard to attain this that the way I'm going to celebrate is by hurting myself, right? So another indication for you to determine whether or not you're highly stressed, how often do you defeat yourself, mm. right? In your behavior, in your language, in your relationships with others? And how often do you hurt yourself physically, right? Well, you sprain an ankle or you trip and fall and knock out a tooth or you slam your knee into the coffee table or you stub your toe in the middle of the night when you're going to the bathroom. Another indication that you're severely stressed is you get up in the middle of the night to urinate. You get up in the middle of the night to urinate. That means your lifetime accumulated stress load is ridiculously high. Okay. Are there ways to reduce that? Yes. And do the people that I work with, do they get up to urinate in the middle of the night anymore? No. Okay. So the first step again is understanding that you have to create a successful pattern, interrupt to your pattern. Are we saying that the pattern that you're in is wrong? No, we're not saying that it's wrong. We're saying, look, you're human and you're doing everything you can to manage with what's available to you. I'm here to tell you that there's way better stuff than what you're using, okay? And it produces a much better result. A result, especially ladies, listen, you're always under the pressure to look good, okay? So the health of your skin, the health of your hair, right? Um, the look of your posture, the feel of, of your energy. There's so much more that a woman has to be aware of than a man. A man can wake up unshaven and his belly, you know, eight inches out in front of his chest. No one cares, right? As long as he's vested in the doing, right? But ladies, if you want to look good, and you want to feel good, and you want to ground yourself, and you want to get control of that overactive, incessant mind of yours that's always telling you you're imperfect, you're unlovable, you're unworthy, 
you have to reduce your lifetime accumulated stress. It's stress that's running around and telling you these things that are completely false and untrue. Yes. And as you were saying, you know, we we have that habit of judging ourselves from that external point of view, thinking we're seeing each other, thinking we're seeing ourselves through other people's eyes and not getting present to that personal connection, the person in the mirror. And when we turn that perspective around and find a way to make peace and be happy with that person that is most important to us ourselves, the rest of that can start falling away. You know, it's funny for me, what came for me when you were sharing that is like being a parent, like if you're a parent and you're hopped up on the, the substances we talked about in the daily drugs, your children from womb until 13 mm -hmm. are absorbing your unconscious and subconscious stress patterns. And that is going to determine their ability to have a wonderful, amazing life. And if, if, if you're willing to interfere with their happiness and their peace and their success, you got to take a really good look in the mirror and ask yourself, why would I be doing that? Right. And it's, it's, it's a simple. Why, why would I be doing that? And then answer that question. And then once you get that answer, ask why about that. And once you get that answer, ask why about that until you've asked why seven times and have come up with seven answers. Because I promise you, when you get to that seventh answer, you're going to get to a very deep awakening moment. It's called the seven whys that lead to one truth. Mm -hmm. Parents, you have responsibilities to your children, not only to provide for them in terms of food, but to give them a comfortable, energetic environment to be in. Right? And if every time I I, I wake up in the morning and dad's already had three or four cups of coffee. I'm me. Am I meeting my dad or, or am I meeting my dad's stress? I'm meeting my dad's stress. If my mom starts drinking wine at five o'clock at night until nine o'clock at night, am I ever communicating clearly with my mom or am I communicating with her stress management tool? right? Because anytime you put a substance in your body that puts your nervous system in fight or flight, when you're around that person, they're going to do everything they can to put you in fight or flight. And then as a child, you're going to create what I call a winning strategy, right? And what's your winning strategy? Your winning strategy is the behavior that you develop to avoid punishment, rejection, humiliation, violence, and discomfort. And if you apply that successfully enough to avoid your parents, punishment, rejection, humiliation, violence, and discomfort, you're going to apply that as your strategy to be successful in the external world. And the moment you get recognition that that strategy has value, it's going to become your identity. And I'm here to talk to you about letting go of that and creating a successful pattern interrupt. And through the call here, we've given you a lot of markers that you can see on the side of the road to go, hey, uh, falling branches, <laughs> okay? You go around the corner, <laughs> high speed turn, slow down. We've given you the markers. The question is, what's keeping you from taking the action? What's keeping you from taking heartfelt action to your own benefit to reduce your lifetime accumulated stress and getting to a state of happiness that you can imagine yet have yet to feel and or experience. Yeah, so important. And, and I've said a number of times on this show, I really feel like we are in a position of healing generational wounds. Mm. And so that's beautifully illustrates our responsibility. And if it's hard to create that pattern interrupt for yourself, think about how you can model health and balance for your children and the people mm. in your life. So sometimes we have to do, you know, we, we are in many cases more willing to do for others than we are to do for ourselves. So if that's what starts to churn the tide, then that can be a powerful. You're going to love this. I, I, I was at a, he a very healthy, health food, health focused restaurant in Manhattan Beach. It's called 924 Kitchen, right? And uh, I know the owner and we're leaving the restaurant. 
And she tells me an 11 year old ordered a double espresso as part of their breakfast. An 11 year old. We got 11 year old children going into restaurants ordering double espressos on a Saturday morning. That means your kid did not recover from yesterday's stress load and they woke up exhausted. That's at 11 years old. This is where we're at in society. We have children, right? Look into the world. Anybody who's doing fentanyl, highly stressed. Anyone who's using marijuana, highly stressed. Anyone who's using alcohol, highly stressed. Now we got kids, 11 year old kids, pounding caffeine. I mean, as soon as she told me, I was like, what did you just say? And she said, no, I had this 11 year old. And I said, are you sure that's what you want? Instead of like, maybe I could get you some orange juice. And he was like, nope, I want a double espresso, right? So in order to feel alive, he had to be jacked up, right? In order for other people to be alive, they have to, they have to go into a downer. And what we're giving you is an opportunity for you to, through this call, to sit back and assess, like, where am I at in my use of the daily acceptable drugs? Yeah, I'm an addict. And if you can admit that to yourself, you can look in the mirror and go, you know what, I I am an addict. I'm going to do whatever I can for myself, but also for my children's benefit to get sober and to get present. You're going to impact your kids' lives in such a positive way. You can't even imagine the outcome. Okay. Yet I do want to champion you to take a half step back and assess honestly your relationship with the daily drugs. And we are, we could continue this conversation, I know, for hours. I think we're certainly <laughs> for hours. We could literally many for hours. Regards, and, um, and I'll find an excuse to get you back here on the show in the future. Um, your book, Free for Life A Navy SEAL's Path to Inner Freedom and Outer Peace, available on your website, True Body Intelligence, along with a lot of great tools and resources, sparks of inspiration. I hope people will go and check that out. We'll have links in the show notes as well. And I know I'll definitely be tuned in to see what else you're creating and sharing in the world because straight talk uncomfortable talk the things that we need to listen to and without distraction without numbing out this is i think so 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 beneficial to where we all are right now so thank you for doing your work thank you thank you for opening the door and thank you for gently guiding i love the way that you hold the container it's super super spacious and your ability to distill down, you know, my long share into a poignant point to then create a greater level of reflection for the per for the listener, right? It was powerful. It was powerful. Like you have a real genius and I hope you keep doing this for a long time. Thank you. I hope to. I hope to. Trying to not let life crowd in around the edges. <laughs> I'm staking out my turf. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and presence, Christopher. It has been a joy. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. To learn more about living life with less stress and more flow, visit happifiedlife.com. Subscribe on your favorite player to catch the next episode as soon as it's out. Sharing really is caring, so please rate and review the show while you're there. And if you know someone else who would love it, please pass it along. Until next time, my friends, keep on shining.